Hi everyone, welcome back. This is uh, Unit 13, Lesson 2, and we're going to talk about the other two series of hydrocarbons, the alkenes with an E and the alkynes with a Y. Okay? So the alkenes have an E, and they are unsaturated because they don't have all single bonds. They have one double bond, and the double bond will always be between carbon atoms in the chain. Remember, hydrogen is happy with two. So H will always only have one bond. So when we have the double bond, it will be between carbons. And it's one double bond between carbons. When there are more than three carbons in the chain, you will have to give the location of the double bond. With a number. I'll, I'll show you that when we do some examples. So the general formula of an alkene, remember you can get that from table Q, that's not something you have to remember, though these are the easiest to remember. They always have two times their number of hydrogens is always two times their number of carbons. So they always have twice as many H's as C's. So what that means, for example, is if you had four carbons, then you would have eight hydrogens. But H's are always double the C's. Okay. When you name an alkene, the prefix is still, just like an alkane, the number of carbons in the chain. And you can get that by looking at table P. So in, in this one, if I had four carbons, I would call it but, would be the, the beginning, the prefix. And since these are alkenes, they will always end in E-N-E. So this would be butene. But again, since bute has four carbons, I would have to provide you with the location of the double bond. You'd have to tell me what carbon it was after. Okay? So we're going to try a couple uh, alkenes. I'll do maybe the first two, and then I'll have you work backwards on the second, on the third one. And we'll save the last one for class. So propene, prop. Um, the prefix tells you your number of carbons, so you're going to go to table P and look up prop. And if you look up prop on table P, it says 3. So that means we have 3 carbons. Okay, so it's C3. And if we're drawing this, we would draw 3 carbons bonded together. Okay, start with all single bonds. The E and E in it tells you that there is one double bond between carbons. Now, when there's only three carbons, it really doesn't matter if you put it here or here because it's really putting it in the same place. Just depends on what side of the molecule you're viewing it from. So just by notation, you could put it there, okay? The propene tells you you need a double bond between the carbons. To get how many hydrogens, you can either draw it or use the general formula. Remember, for an ene, there's always twice as many H's as C's, so this would be H6. Or you can draw it. Carbon has to have four bonds around it. This carbon only has one, two, so it needs three, two more, right? Three, four. And you just attach <coughs> H's there since these are hydrocarbons. That's the only other thing that can be in the structure. This carbon has one, two, three bonds, so you're only going to need one more H there. This carbon has one bond. You will need three H's there. So there is propene, okay? We'll do two pentene next. Again, remember, pent is your number of carbons, just like the pentagon. Uh, it has five sides. Pent, when you look it up on table P, pent means five. Okay? So we have C5. 
Since it's an E, the H's are always double the carbons, H10. That is your molecular formula for 2-pentene, okay? So when we draw it, we will draw five carbons in a row, one, two, three, four, five. Now, where to put the double bond? I did tell you when you have more than three carbons, you need to indicate the location of the double bond. So that's what this number is. This is the location of the double. So this is telling you, hey, Kevin, after the second carbon, put a double bond. So I'll count in my chain, one, two, and after the second carbon, I will place a double bond, okay? Now we can just fill in so that every carbon has four bonds around it, fill in the pages. So the first carbon should be three. And the second carbon has one, two, three already, so it only needs one. And the third carbon has one, two, three, so it only needs one. And this carbon has two, so it needs three, four. This carbon has one, so it needs, let me just erase from the other structure so you don't get confused. Two, three. Okay? So that is how you would draw them given the name and get their formula. Again, remember these are the molecular formulas, not the empirical formulas. The empirical formulas are reduced formulas. So I'd like you to try number three. I give you the structure. I'd like you to write the formula and then name it. So try that one on your own and we'll do number four together in class on Tuesday. The final class of hydrocarbons it are the alkynes, and they're unsaturated, again, meaning they don't have all single bonds. They contain one triple, okay? Remember, these end in a Y and E. So their general formula, again, you can get that from table Q. It's much of the same thing here. It's CnH2n minus 2. So to determine your hydrogens, you double your number of carbons and then subtract 2 from it. So these have less than twice um, their number of hydrogens is less than double the carbons. an easy way to identify an alkyne. Um, again, if there are more than three carbons in the chain, you need to indicate the location of the triple bond, just like with the double bond. Okay, so just like with al alkenes, if there are more than three carbons in the chain, you must give location of the triple bond. And you do that by putting a number in front of its name. So, again, just like alkanes, just like alkenes, the prefix is the number of carbons. You get that by looking here at table P for prefixes. The suffix, since these are alkynes, these will always end in Y and E. Okay. So number one is ethyne. Eth, if you go to table P, means two carbons. To get the formula, we double two and then subtract two. So if you double two, you get four. Take away two, C2H2. You draw your structure. One, two. Only one place the triple bond can be is between those carbons. You fill in so that every carbon has four bonds around it. There is your structure for ethyne. 1-butyne, start with the last name here, but means four carbons. The ine means you need a triple bond. Not all triple bonds, one triple bond. So you draw your four carbons. 
And you're like, where should I put the triple bond? Well, the number is telling you where to put the triple bond. Saying, hey, Kevin, after the first carbon, put the triple bond. So here's your first carbon. Make your triple bond there. Okay? And then fill in. So everybody has four, every carbon has four bonds around it. And what you're filling in with are hydrogens because these are hydrocarbons. The only two elements they have are hydrogen and carbon. So this carbon has one, two, three. It needs one more. Make it four. This carbon's already happy. One, two, three, four. Doesn't need any hydrogens, right? This carbon has one, two, so it needs three, four. This carbon has one, two, three, four. Okay? So our formula should be C4. Remember, double and subtract two. So double, you get eight. Subtract two, you get six. And if you actually go here and count your hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's how many you have. So this is one butyne, okay, one butyne. And then we'll save this last row here for in class on Tuesday, but I'd like you to also go ahead and try to um, name, write the molecular formula and name this third row here. So I'd like you to do this one, please. Fill in this and fill in this. Okay? And again, save that for in class on Tuesday. That's it for tonight, everybody. I hope you enjoy your nice long weekend. Stay safe, and we'll see you in class on Tuesday. Don't forget, Tuesday is the makeup test for Redox. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.